So what is the supply chain and what does it have to do with you? Everything has a supply chain. Your cell phone, the coffee you drink, the music you listen to, and the items you order online all have a supply chain. All these goods that started out as raw materials were manufactured, assembled, stored, and then transported to your local store or home from around the corner or from around the globe. As a consumer, you're a part of it. So what's a consumer? A consumer is a person or organization that uses a commodity or service. We're all consumers. Every day we buy, sell, trade, and use products. A global supply chain allows us to convert raw materials, manufacture and assemble products, and store and transport goods to your local store from any part of the world. One of the factors that contribute to an efficient global supply chain is containerization. What is containerization? Containerized cargo allows goods to move more efficiently from one mode of transportation to another. Think about it. When you order a product online, when it arrives on a ship in Long Beach, how much longer will it take to get delivered to your door if it had to be unloaded and unpacked before being delivered to you? New markets become more accessible, and as a result, products can be made locally or made from materials from around the world. Today, cargo is mostly carried on container ships moving across the ocean but it also includes many modes of transportation, such as ships, trucks, trains, and airplanes. You've probably seen one of these on the road. It's a shipping container. You've seen it on ships, rail cars, trucks, warehouses, and the yard of any marine terminal at the port. The standard shipping container measures 20 feet long, eight feet tall, or one TEU. A TEU stands for 20 foot equivalent unit, which is a standard unit for measuring a ship's cargo carrying capacity. While the standard unit measurement is a 20-foot container, cargo can also be loaded in a 40-foot or 45-foot container. Containerized cargo makes it possible to transport more goods more efficiently. Instead of loading different types of goods randomly on a ship, the size and shape of the containers make it a little bit like stacking and fitting Lego blocks. It allows you to load many containers aboard a ship and reduces operational cost. This is what's referred to as creating economies of scale. You move more containers per ship at a lower cost. Transportation cost is one factor that goes into the cost of a product. Luckily for you, this means when the technology gets better and cheaper, transport costs can go down and goods cost less. Today, the largest vessel to call into Los Angeles is the Benjamin Franklin. Imagine, this ship can carry as many as 90 million pairs of shoes. Why is this important? First, what is a port? A port is defined as a city, town, or other place where ships load and unload. The ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles are two separate entities and located side by side. Together, they are referred to as the San Pedro Bay Port Complex. Much like an airport is a place where passengers or cargo are loaded or unloaded off of an airplane, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach is a place where cargo or passengers, in the case of a cruise line, is taken on or off a vessel. What does it mean to have these two major ports in your backyard? As ships get bigger, ports must also be deeper. Luckily for us, the ports of LA and Long Beach are deep water ports and they can accommodate these larger vessels. Together, the ports of LA and Long Beach handle over 16 million TEUs. Combined, they rank as the ninth largest container port in the world and as the largest container port facility in North America, generating employment for nearly 3 million nationwide. The ports are the exit and entry points locally for many supply chains, and this translates into many job opportunities for you. So back to what this all has to do with the supply chain. According to the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, supply chain management encompasses the planning and management of all activities involved in sourcing and procurement, conversion, and all logistics management activities. Importantly, it also includes coordination and collaboration with channel partners, which can be suppliers, intermediaries, third-party service providers, and customers. In essence, supply chain management integrates supply and demand management within and across companies. When you think about a supply chain, think about a product. First, it starts with a need and ends with the delivery of the final product or service to the final consumer. But it also involves many steps in between, like designing your product and procuring raw materials, working with suppliers for materials or procurement of materials to build your product, coordinating with multiple partners involved in manufacturing your product, storing and distributing the product, getting your product to retailers, meeting your customer's demand, and many more steps in between to ensure the process is moving the goods to the end user at the right price, to the right place, and on time. What do you think a supply chain looks like? 
Chain in supply chain simply refers to the linked chronological events which all collectively create a flow of goods from producer to end user. So what's the difference between supply chain and logistics? Think about supply chain as the coach and logistics as the player. They both provide direction to how the team must position team members, the coach decides the overall game plan, and the player executes the moves adapting along the way. Logistics is the player, an activity. As part of the supply chain, it's the physical handling of all the moving parts. The reverse flow is called the reverse logistics. Think about the process when you return a damaged product or a product you don't like. Logistics is not supply chain. Logistics is the management of the flow of goods. It's the mode of transport, the cost of transport, and the why of transportation. Logistics is part of a supply chain, just like procurement is part of a supply chain. According to the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, logistics management is the part of supply chain management that plans, implements, and controls the forward and reverse flows and storage of goods, services, and related information between the point of origin and the point of consumption in order to meet customers' requirements. Managing logistics is the integrating function which coordinates and optimizes all the logistics activities. It integrates not only the different modes of transportation, but it also addresses the various processes and disciplines involved, such as sales, finance, sourcing, and many more to make sure you get what you need. And when it all comes together, we refer to it as integrated logistics which is a process that tries to combine all these individual links so that they better serve one another and still take individual department goals and missions into consideration. Integrated logistics works to streamline, limit redundancies and duplicate activities and processes across the different company departments. One of the key goals for supply chain management is to achieve cost-efficient fulfillment of demand. What does it mean to be efficient? Efficient is defined as performing or functioning in the best possible manner with the least waste of time and effort. Think about it. When you order a product online, you want it as fast as possible at the right price and with the quality promised. So it means getting goods from point A to point B as fast as promised and with minimum inventory and minimum cost within each department involved. This is what enables you to buy your favorite stuff at a good price and also allows companies to keep in business as long as they stay competitive. So let's review what we've learned. You want the right product at the right cost and at the right time. And as consumers, you are the ones driving the supply chain. We expect to have our goods faster than ever, which influences transportation choices in the supply chain. Businesses want to meet your demand, so they streamline their processes and invest in technology to do so. Advancements in technology are making the changes that we see every day in our supply chain possible. The industry continues to evolve with new technologies to source materials, manufacture products more efficiently, and move goods faster and cleaner. With new technologies in place, what do you think the industry will look like in the future? Think about this. Where are we headed today and what do we expect in the future? How will our products be manufactured and delivered to meet customer expectations? How will changes in demographics and infrastructure influence our supply chains? Opportunities in supply chain can cover many industries, including fashion and entertainment and defense. The jobs available include different areas of expertise, including accounting and finance, information technology, logistics, product development, sales and marketing, sourcing and purchasing, and trade compliance. This is a dynamic industry with so many opportunities that require different skill sets. Businesses need you. Will you be a part of the supply chain of the future?